Okay, I don't think we are going to move on now. Obviously, we can't ask Barry any questions as he's not here. So we're going, going to move on to our next um, speaker. So our next speaker is Dr. Elaine Winkley. Elaine is a consultant anaesthetist at Northumbria Healthcare Trust, and she's also clinical lead for sustainability. Elaine is also the chair of the Faculty of Sustainable Healthcare with Health Education England Northeast. The faculty has been existent for um, two to three years and recently held a very successful conference. Elaine has led the way in improving sustainability at Northumbria NHS Foundation Trust with the launch of a pioneering waste warrior project. Today, Elaine is going to give us an outline of climate change and why it is essential that healthcare professionals are educated to allow them to make a difference. Elaine will be getting us up to speed on what the Faculty of Sustainable Healthcare is and what education packages are available in the Northeast. So Elaine, over to you. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for inviting me. I'm just gonna um, share my slides and hopefully this will all go very smoothly. Can you see my slides? Excellent. Fantastic. Um, yeah, so thank you again for the invite. Um, a bit of a fish out of water speaking to you all today as an anaesthetist, but very fortunate to work closely alongside a lot of pharmacists and also with MINA in the work that we've been doing in the Northeast. Um, so I'm going to talk largely about the work with the faculty today, but touch on some other areas. So bit about myself. Um, I trained in Newcastle upon Tyne, um, but I'm originally from Accrington in the northwest. Um, I've always had a love for the outdoor spaces um, and a particular love of our beaches and our coastline here in the northeast. Um, again, like the previous speaker, I have children and it was very much from them the impetus came to try and do something within my professional career. Um, they were very aware from a very young age at the age of two or three the importance of um, climate change, the importance of recycling. And to me, that made me feel even more concerned that within healthcare, we didn't seem to be doing very much on it. So that gave me the momentum to try and make a difference in my own clinical practice, and then also in setting up the faculty. If you wish to find out any more about the faculty, I'll pop the website link on there, and I'm happy for my slides to be shared. So within anaesthesia and within the operating theatre, we generate a lot of waste and we have a lot of um, energy draining processes, such as the lights, the air conditioning within theatre. So to me, that was paramount to get involved in the initial steps with climate change and healthcare. And that led on to lots of subsequent projects. I was also aware as a trainee, as a, when I was rotating through different trusts, I didn't receive any education. I didn't know why it was important for us as healthcare professionals to lead the way on this. And that was why I approached Prof Kumar um, at Health Education England Northeast to try and set something up so the resources were available for all healthcare professionals in the Northeast to try and educate themselves to move this work forward. Um, so just a couple of slides now about um, climate change, which I'm hopeful um, you're aware of. Um, this diagram shows the, the global temperature every year over the last hundreds of years. And you can see that the planet is getting hotter and hotter. And the five warmest years are the, after 2000. And a lot of this is thought to be due to the burning of fossil fuels in the Industrial Revolution. And so it became key when I first saw this that actually in my lifetime, things have got worse. And I remember being that child sat at school in a science lesson, being told not to worry about climate change. It wouldn't affect me in my lifetime. And this is why it's very key that it is happening now. We have to accept it's happening now, but we have to then make a change to all of our daily lives, starting with a small change, but then looking at how we address things at work and in our professional lives, how we can make a big impact. And I think we've all been aware in the last 12 months with the hottest days on record, the flooding and the storms, that these weather patterns are happening now and there's having a direct influence of causing a lot of damage and health and healthcare problems with respect to that. Um, and things are only going to get worse. So we do have to act now. Back in um, October 2020, Simon Stevens launched the NHS Net Zero Plan. And when I looked at this pie chart from that document, it became very clear to me that as a healthcare professional, I follow in medical ethics, I set out to do no harm. Yet every day within my practice, I was having an impact on the environment. And this pie chart, as you can see, two thirds of the emissions from the NHS are related to medicines and medical equipment. And as an anaesthetist, I felt that is the bit that I could influence the most by looking for alternatives, by looking for innovative technologies and how we source things to try and reduce my impact on the planet. 
I also think it's quite alarming that 2% of global plastic production is for medical plastic, and that is increasing year on year. And we see that all the time. Everything we use is single use. There's such a huge volume of waste generated from all clinical environments. And I think as an anaesthetist, we were um, shown the way with this with the project that was done by Cathy Lawson and the Association of Anaesthetists of how harmful Desflurane, one of our um, inhalational agents, was. And that has um, made a huge change in our behaviours to start looking for alternatives and innovations so we can provide high quality care with less impact on the environment. So the Faculty of Sustainable Healthcare, um, this came about as an idea that I had in my head that we needed to provide um, training to clinicians. It isn't readily in all undergraduate or postgraduate curriculum, although that is now starting to develop, it's still not there. So one of the first meetings I had was just after we went into lockdown um, from the first round of COVID. Um, but I needed something to hold on to during that difficult two years, something to, to think I can make a difference. Um, when everything was getting a bit out of control, what can I focus on? So I approached Prof Kumar and she supported me and we decided to set up a multidisciplinary faculty to provide education to all the healthcare professionals across the North East and North Cumbria on sustainability and the importance of environmental impact of healthcare. And in doing that, we got um, a lot of individuals around the table to try and highlight what were the key points we wanted to address. And initially, it was just getting the basic level of education out there as, as why climate change impacts human health and what is the footprint of healthcare and how can we make a difference. And by bringing people together, we started to develop a network. And I'm pleased to say that when we officially launched in September 2021, things have taken off. There's a huge appetite for this. As clinicians, we want to improve human health not have a negative effect and so a lot of people have got on board to support our work and share ideas the aims of the faculty are to provide that education form a network but also to share best practice share what's going on between different organizations share knowledge and share quality improvement projects that are focused on sustainability we all know time is very limited within all our jobs but we know how important this is, so we don't want to keep reinventing the wheel. We want to share those ideas so that other people in trust can pick up on the work that's done and so we can make a bigger impact. And one of the key things we want to do is help the North East to become the greenest region in the UK. The North East, as you may know, um, is very industry heavy. Um, many years ago, a lot of industrial work will have led to pollution within our local cities, Sunderland, Newcastle, um, and also in Carlisle. And so we want to try and transform that by embracing making our um, area greener and also helping to educate the local population as well as the people that work within healthcare. So what we've managed to achieve and make available for people are the e-learning for health modules. So they are accessible by anyone working in healthcare. There's three there available at the minute, um, um, an introduction to net zero, um, one on SUSQI, and we're developing one currently on sustainable dentistry. And we're, we're creating those alongside the Centre for Sustainable Healthcare, um, who we've worked very collaboratively with, because we want to provide a, an education module that everybody can access. So you can get that basic level of information and then you can add on to that more if you wish to find out more. We've created our own workshops and these are done as um, a four hour session online prior to a afternoon workshop where you have discussion and meet colleagues to try and create ideas and help you to develop a plan for a SUSQI project moving forward. We also had our annual conference um, that has just gone by in September which amazingly sold out in 48 hours. And that proved to us that there is an appetite for this. And it was a fantastic event that brought people from all different specialities together and also people from the local area, the university and the council to understand how we can work together to make healthcare greener. We've also um, got a quarterly newsletter called Sustainability Matters. And that's to share the work that's going on in the region and also to help provide a network so that people coming through training, undergraduate, postgraduate, and an established post can see what work is happening and engage with people to share ideas. This is the link for the e-learning for health modules. 
every year we look for new opportunity. So um, the sustainability and dentistry module, which is launching soon, is the latest one we've developed. But we hope to add to this so that there's a whole collection of modules that everybody can access. Um, and they are easy to read. We would love to make them mandatory within um, induction processes in trusts. Um, and I know that in County Durham and Darlington, the building a net zero module is now mandatory to provide that baseline knowledge for all staff members because we all have to work on this. We all have to make small differences to be able to make a big impact. These are some of our workshop dates that are coming up. Um, they are open to everyone within the Northeast. We do have people signing on from outside the region, and I'm more than happy to support anyone that's in attendance today, joining up to them if they think they may be useful. Um, and we do have some carbon footprinting um, vouchers to book onto our Centre for Sustainable Healthcare um, courses. And that um, is just to help guide people with their SUSQI project in how to work out carbon footprinting. Because as clinicians, it's not an education and a pathway that we go down and people often want to know more. Although climate change is not just about carbon and we also have to look after our oceans as well. Um, and a keen colleague of mine, Richard Hickson, is very passionate about that. So just coming to an end, we are at the beginning of this journey, although I've been involved in this work for three or four years. I always have to think where we started and that we have come a long way and why are we doing this? And as the previous speaker mentioned, it is about children. I have three young children and I want the planet to look as it does now and no worse um, as they become adults and have their own children. So we all have to act now. It is not just words. We have to make a difference. And hopefully by providing educational tools, we can all do that in our daily um, roles. So thank you very much for listening. Um, and I'll stop showing my presentation. I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you so much for that, Elaine. It's just brilliant to hear about the amazing work that's going on up in the Northeast. And I think we are all thinking about moving there right now so we can join in. <laughs> OK, so we have a few questions. Um, let's see. First one popped up in the chat box. Um, let's see what it said so will promoting more local manufacturing help us meet our sustainability and supply chain responsibility goals that's from adam so um absolutely um i'm pleased to report that um within procurement there are new targets so that any organization that the nhs has to work with now has to provide its green credentials and i think it, it will be mandatory by 2024 which is not too far away um, I know in our organisation, in the last six months, we have recruited two um, specialists into our procurement department that are specifically looking at alternative items and their greener credentials and the weighting towards the carbon footprint of items um, has been increased. Um, Northumbria is very lucky as a trust that in the pandemic, we're very innovative and we set up our own manufacturing hub. And that has actually helped us with example, um, we've manufactured our own theatre caps. So now that they are reusable and washable, um, but rather than having hats shipped in from China and across the seas, they're now coming from a factory that is approximately a mile from the hospitals that we work in. So absolutely, the more local sourcing we can do, which does come sometimes at a financial cost, um, it'll be more beneficial for the environment, but also supporting the local community and addressing the triple bottom line. Wow. Okay. That's, that's amazing. So a, a related question from Liwa saying climate change is contributing to ill health. How is the pharmacy manufacturing sector contributing towards net zero? Do you have any sort of take on that, Elaine? Um, so uh, not working with pharmaceutical companies directly, but being aware of things that are going on. I know that some of the companies are addressing this quicker than others. Um, and I think that they all have to provide green credentials. The carbon footprint, as you've seen, for manufacturing items is massive. Um, and I think each individual company needs to be held to account. And pharma obviously is a big money generator. But I think as the NHS, we have to apply pressure and say we are not going to purchase from companies that are not addressing this and making the big steps forward. Yeah, there's, there's, there's so many issues there, isn't there? There's, there's the, the pharmaceutical pollution, but then there's also the waste of the packaging, the you know, why aren't we able to recycle inhalers across the country? There's, there's a whole range of issues there that we really need to kind of get some action going on, don't we? 
Okay, a few more questions. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm really impressed at how you've managed to sort of galvanize people and get people working together and sharing practice. And, and in that sort of community, you get sort of motivation, don't you? So Nick is asking any suggestions for making contacts in our area and getting started in developing a sustainability network. So what would be your top tips, Elaine, for somebody who's trying to do something like, like you've done? So top tips is talking to everybody wherever you go about it. So I think one of the I was very fortunate that Kathy Lawson, who did the big project with the Association of Anesis, was also a friend and a trainee that I worked alongside. And when she took on that first um, initial fellowship, I stayed in touch with her because it was something I'd wanted to do, but I'd come to the end of my training. So me and Kathy constantly spoke to each other and it, it became clear that a lot of the things we want to do do make sense. But how do you make that change? So. When I became a consultant at Northumbria, I spoke to everybody, nurses, surgeons, just in theatre, having a conversation of why do we not recycle? Why are we not doing this? Do you think there's an alternative? And there are enthusiasts out there um, on the shop floor. And, and now it is great for me that when I do go and do my acute pain round, I meet the pharmacy tech, Vicky, who's got a passion about this. I meet the nurses that have got a passion and they'll share ideas. It's being brave enough to stick your head up and say, Let's do something with all these enthusiasts. Let's create something, be that a network or the faculty. Um, and I didn't ever think that when I sent that first email to say we need to set something up to provide education, it would get the positive reaction that it did. So I think it's having that bravery, talking to people. And even if it is just setting up in your own trust a little, let's get a few people together, have a chat, see what we can do. It's a starting point, And from that, yeah. things grow. Yeah, yeah. So really talking to people because you might have colleagues who are really passionate about this, but you don't know because nobody's having that conversation. So yeah, it's finding your tribe, isn't it? Finding yeah. the people who are on the same um, wavelength. Okay, brilliant. Um, so some people wanting to kind of make contact with you directly, Elaine, because they're wanting to sort of set up um, sort of similar processes. So Roisin in Northern Ireland is, is really keen to get in touch with you. Um, so we'll kind of... Um, I'll put my... Um work email address into the chat and then I'm more than happy it may take right. me a bit of time I was going to say I hope <laughs> you don't get completely swamped with emails I think you might uh Martha's asking if presentation slides will be made available we're recording all of this and it'll all be available on the um, pharmacy declares website um okay so I think that is all of the key questions um asked uh, answered thank you very much so thank you so much Elaine it's really great to hear such sort of um, positive and inspiring work going on and you know so great that just from just initially talking to people um, you've managed to generate all of this some people also asking about getting involved in attending some of your um, education sessions so again presumably if they email you you'll be able to um, give them some advice about absolutely that. yeah okay that's lovely thank you so much Elaine thank you very much